While we all know and love The Last of Us for its complex and relatable characters, the relationships between those characters, and the interesting and unique factions we encounter during the course of the game, the world they inhabit is just as important as they are. Now, everything we know about that world is limited to almost exclusively what happened in the United States during and after the outbreak of CPI in late 2013. But there are some minor bits and pieces of information on what happened elsewhere too. Hey stragglers and tourists, my name is the iPad Cat, and what did really happen to the rest of the world in The Last of Us's universe? Well, that's what we'll be going over in today's video. I'll piece together what little information we have and, of course, as always, give you my own thoughts and theories on the topic. So without further ado, let's, let's get, get on, on with it. it! What's kind of funny about a game set in an end-of-the-world scenario is that we know pretty much nothing about that end. Out of the total 140 collectibles in the game, 85 of which are lore documents, only three have any remote reference to the world outside of the US. And even those are nothing more than extremely minor references. Aside from that, the only further information in the game comes in the form of a few lines of dialogue and interactive objects in the prologue. So, surprisingly, the majority of what we know about what happened to, and the current state of the rest of the world, comes from sources outside the game, which consists almost entirely out of concept and promotional art. I also know the odd thing has been said in interviews here and there too, but since those quotes are extremely hard to find and sift through, even though I personally remember what was said, I will not include most of it here. So, let's start with the artifacts. The first one is called Shipping Manifest and can be found during the Quarantine Zone chapter at the docks where Robert is hiding. It's exactly what the name suggests, a shipping manifest of the goods from a recent smuggler expedition. The majority of it talks about how the sailors almost got arrested for smuggling, but how Robert managed to sweet talk and bribe them out of it. What's interesting though is this part of the list of goods. Two crates of frozen meat. More Canadian bison. Now, how exactly is that relevant to the state of the rest of the world, you might ask yourself. Well, I'm not a biologist and I don't know much about bison, but I googled around for a bit and didn't find any specific species of bison named Canadian bison. Thus, my conclusion is that this refers to bison hunted in Canada which implicates a number of things. Firstly, that this particular smuggling expedition, but also perhaps the entire operation, came from Canada, which further suggests that there is some sort of society left there. Otherwise, who would have hunted the bison, butchered it and frozen it to be traded with the smugglers? Now, whether or not the country of Canada survived in some shape or form, as the US did, or the people there in question are just survivors or factions formed during the apocalypse, we can only speculate. But at least we can take away that there is some sort of organized society left in Canada from this. Moving on, we have the second artifact called Tessa's List, which can be found right at the start of the outskirts chapter in Joel and Tessa's safe house. It is, as the name suggests, another manifest of goods. Now, like with the previous one, there is not really anything extraordinary about this artifact. It gives us a slight insight into the kind of supplies Joel and Tess would take into the Boston quarantine zone as part of their smuggling operation, and what they would consider a bad haul. But that's about it. The only part we're interested in this is this. One crate Canadian whiskey. Now, the only reason I brought this up is that it's one of the extremely few places where even the name of another country is mentioned. As I said, the only things we find in the game are nothing more than extremely minor references. Of course, Canadian whiskey could, like with the bison, refer to that this crate of whiskey did indeed originate there, and implicate the same things as before. But that is very unlikely in this case, 
I mean, of course, it probably came from Canada 20 years ago, before the outbreak, but that's not really what we're talking about here. We do know that Joel and Tessa's smuggling operation pretty much depended on trading supplies with Bill, and Bill very rarely even leaves his town, much less interacts with other people, which leads us to the probable conclusion that this crate of whiskey was just something scavenged by Bill in or around Lincoln, and nothing really indicating the survival of Canada. Finally, and most interestingly, we have the third and last artifact with any mention of the outside world, called newspaper clipping, which can be found in a dorm room in the university chapter. Now this one, as opposed to the previous two, is actually relevant and interesting in its entirety. It reads, US military recalls search effort, by Lev Benioff, field writer. With the latest WHO report estimating that as much as 60% of the world's population is either dead or infected by the CBI pandemic, the United States military has released a statement that they're recalling all of their search efforts. Regions up to 10 miles from each quarantine zone's perimeter will remain under patrol for citizens attempting to enter, but no further effort will be made to evacuate those potentially trapped in hard-to-reach areas. Attorney General Arthur Monroe made this clear in a letter. Now, this was likely published pretty far into the outbreak, considering the infected percentage. While it doesn't give us any details on specific countries or continents, aside from the US, it gives us the only information and idea about how many people were actually affected by the fungus. And from that, we can easily draw the conclusion that most nations would have ceased to function, and most likely collapsed entirely at this point. For reference, pandemics in the past, like the Spanish flu, which only killed about 2.5% of the global population, caused absolute chaos and near collapse around the world. Thus, CBI killing 60% makes it 24 times worse than one of the worst disease outbreaks in human history. We also have to remember that the CBI, unlike the Spanish flu, doesn't only kill, but also turns its victims into mindless monsters. Which again, makes me think it's safe to say that there isn't much left of the rest of the world. The US is, in many aspects, unique in comparison to the rest of the world. It's the biggest economic powerhouse in the world, and has by far the most powerful military. Now, consider how incredibly hard it was hit by the CBI, and what state it's in 20 years after the outbreak. The most powerful country in the world barely survived and hangs on by a thread at the time of the main game. I mean, take a country like Sweden, my home. Our military is tiny, and we have some of the strictest gun laws in the world. If a killer fungus comes around that not only wipes out the majority of our population, but also turns a lot of them into vicious monsters, further spreading the sickness? Yeah, I don't think there'd be much left. Save for maybe small groups of survivors and perhaps the odd military holdout at bases way up north where nobody lives. And I think that would be the case for 90% of the world's countries, except for the biggest superpowers. The thing is, 60% is actually not even the real percentage. I know that's what it says in the article in the game, but the real numbers are way worse. Yes, I said I would exclude most of what's been said in interviews, but this is too important to leave out. According to Naughty Dog themselves, the actual percentage of deaths slash infected caused by the CBI is 90%, which only further reinforces my previous points. The source for this is one of the now really old factions multiplayer streams that frequently had the Naughty Dog devs on them as guests, but I couldn't find the specific one. If any of you managed to find it, you're welcome to post a link to it in the comments down below. Anyways, the reason why we don't see this percentage in the game is that once it got that bad, there was nobody left to actually measure the numbers and publish them. I mean, the fact that the WHO was still active when 60% of the entire world had either died or become mindless creatures that continued to spread it is almost a plot hole in my mind. 
I mean, just look at the chaos that's going on in the world right now. And that's from a virus that's only killed a few thousand people so far. 60% of the world population? Now that is 4.2 billion people. How could any institution function after that? Anyways, the takeaway from this newspaper clipping is that the world, at the point of its publication, was in deep shit. That was getting worse fast, and that most nations had probably collapsed. Moving on, we have the clues from the prologue of the game. The first one being the newspaper in the bathroom of Joel and Sarah's house. It reads, Admittance spikes at area hospitals. 300% increase due to mysterious infection. FDA expands list of contaminated crops. Massive recalls anticipated. The Food and Drug Administration's investigation of crops potentially tainted with mold continues across the country. Initial lists distributed to vendors nationwide warned against crops imported from South America. But now the scope has extended to include Central America and Mexico. Several companies have already voluntarily recalled their food products from store shelves. The FDA is expected to release an expanded list of foods under their end quote. Now, most of you probably know about this newspaper since it's one of the very first things you can interact with in the game. But I'm going to bring it up here anyway since it's one of the most important pieces of lore in The Last of Us period. This is because it gives us the only clue of the origin and cause of the CBI. Tainted crops from South America. Though, we're not here to discuss the CBI itself, but the fact that we get details on its origin and initial spread from South America then to Central America and Mexico and finally the US gives us an idea of what might have happened to those parts of the world. I mentioned this in my video of The Last of Us's intro credit scene, which we'll get to in a bit, that those areas of the world could probably have been in the process of collapsing before it even reached the US. This because everything we know about the outbreak period points toward it being a fairly slow event. If you're wondering how I came to that conclusion, I strongly recommend that you watch the video I just mentioned. That and the fact that pandemics usually hit their places of origin, their epicenter, the hardest, makes me believe that there's not much left of those areas by the time of the main game. I mean, they certainly couldn't have gotten a heads up like some places in the US did if it started there. And since they would have been the first to deal with the infected, they were the ones to make all the mistakes in how to react to and fight them before an at least somewhat effective strategy could be created. Meaning, they'd stumble around in the dark the longest and thus take the most damage. Moving on, we have the second and final reference to the outside world in the prologue. This time from the intro credit scene, where one of the lines of dialogue is this. Panic spread worldwide after a leaked report from the World Health Organization showed that the latest vaccination tests have failed. This, again, like with many of the previous things I've brought up, is nothing more than a minor reference. But given the very scarce amount of even as much as a minor reference to the rest of the world, I included it anyway. It's a world-ending pandemic, so of course the vaccination tests failed and cause a panic. It doesn't really give us a lot of insight into what was going on, except maybe for that the individual countries of the world weren't trying to cure the CBI on their own and instead put all of their eggs into the basket of the WHO, which ended up failing them all. It could be that that was the point when things started to collapse in the rest of the world for real. If all of them were looking to the WHO to save them, they obviously didn't have any better plans of their own, otherwise it wouldn't have caused this panic. But that's all pure speculation on my part. Moving on, we have the artwork left. This, as I mentioned previously, is where the bulk of information on what happened to the rest of the world comes from. Now, if I'm honest, I'm not quite sure if it's all canon, since it was all done as part of promoting the game. But I have no reason to assume it's not. The first picture is this newspaper front page, which gives us quite a bit of information. The first thing you'll notice is probably the big headline that looks exactly like the logo for the game, which, if I remember correctly, is what inspired the design in the first place. 
The phrase, The Last of Us, is also mentioned in an excerpt from the unnamed Last President of the Last of Us universe, which reads, Our union remains strong. The military is making large gains and securing additional quarantine zones. This, followed by something I can't quite make out, turning point. We are not and will not be the last of us. Mankind will prevail. Which is pretty cool, but unrelated to the topic of this video. We also see the headline, The President Addresses a Panicked Nation as Millions More Are Feared Dead or Infected. Which probably means this newspaper was one of the last issues to be published before things broke down completely. But it doesn't tell us much more than that. We also have this other headline reading, Texas, New Mexico Quarantine Fails. Which I'm kinda mad I didn't notice earlier, because it actually confirms one of my theories from my Quarantine Zone video. That being that Austin, and Texas as a whole, was hit first and hardest in the US which made whatever efforts the military had going on there fail, forcing Joel and Tommy to flee the state. You can watch that video here if you're interested. Anyways, that still doesn't tell us much about the rest of the world. Though, there is one headline here that does, and it's this one. England latest to declare martial law, which implicates a number of things. Firstly, it suggests that other countries have done so before England, which means they could have acted fast enough to be able to preserve some semblance of society, like the US, though which countries that could be, there is no way of knowing. And secondly, it could mean one of two things for England. Either, since they did introduce martial law, they could have survived in some capacity, or it could mean that they are one of the countries that collapsed and disappeared. Since this was so far into the outbreak, and they didn't do anything until millions more are feared dead or infected. It sounds a lot like it could be too little too late. Moving on, we have a ton of art that was made by Naughty Dog artists to promote the game, depicting cities across the world and what they look like 20 years after the CBI outbreak. I'll have most of them roll in the background here as I talk about it. While not all of them gives us any clues about any potentially surviving societies in their respective countries, all of them look amazing and some of them certainly spark my imagination as to what might have gone down and what the situation is like there now. Especially the one depicting my hometown, Stockholm. But that's only really because I live here. However, there are two that are quite interesting from a lore perspective those being the Battersea Power Station in London and the Kremlin in Moscow, which are the only two that we can see for sure haven't been abandoned. Both of them are located close to their respective countries' seats of power, which leads me to believe that their governments, or at least Fedra equivalents, may be intact and hold up there. There aren't really any signs or flags to indicate as much though which makes it impossible to say. For all we know, it could also be former QC equivalents taken over by Hunter, Firefly or WLF style groups. But at least in the case of the Moscow one, it looks very militarized and orderly, which at least makes a potential government slash Fedra style faction surviving there more likely. Many of the other ones could also still be inhabited, but since they are all depicted during daytime and without people in them, it's impossible to tell. I'll leave the link to the gallery of all these pictures in the description so you can have a look for yourself, and maybe tell me your theories about it in the comments. Anyways, to summarize, we have very little information on what happened to and the current state of the rest of the world in The Last of Us universe. We know that there has to be some sort of civilization left in Canada due to the meat the Boston QC smugglers brought from there. The fact that the CBI was such a severe pandemic indicates that the absolute majority of the world's nations most likely didn't survive and collapsed into nothing but minor groups and factions of survivors, judging by the numbers in the newspaper clipping artifact. South America, Central America and Mexico were most likely hit the hardest by the CBI since the outbreak started and first spread there, as we learned from the newspaper in Joel and Sarah's bathroom. 
there's a good chance most of the nations of the world put all of their faith for a vaccine in the WHO, which ultimately failed. Which we heard from a reporter during the game's intro credit scene. England implemented martial law as the latest of many unknown countries quite far into the outbreak as indicated by this newspaper front page. They either succeeded in preserving some sort of society as supported by the promotional art of the Battersea power station, or their efforts fell short due to them taking action too late. Some sort of faction inhabits the Kremlin in Moscow, Russia. More than likely a government slash military remnant as indicated by the promotional Destroyed Cities art. And finally, the Destroyed Cities promotional art indicates that many other countries survived, at least for a while, but there's no way of knowing for sure if they're still going. Hopefully part 2 and maybe even the new HBO show will give us additional insight into what happened to the world during those 20 years. And maybe even its current state. But for that, we'll just have to wait. However, those are just my findings, theories and thoughts on the rest of the world in The Last of Us's universe. What do you think? Do you agree with my points? Disagree? Did I miss anything? And what do you think happened to the rest of the world? Tell me in the comments down below and let's talk about it. And after that, why not continue the discussion on my Discord server? And until next time, have a great day.